delicious, invigorating. Folks at home, folks at home, how you doing? Welcome to Ike Live. This is a very special edition of Ike Live. You've been waiting for it for like two years. Here it is. Tonight is the kayak special edition of Ike Live. Man, I am stoked about tonight's show. Uh, this whole movement makes me excited. I'm glad we have an entire show dedicated to it. Ike Live is presented by Hobie Kayaks, and we're going to be talking Hobie Kayaks and all kayaks tonight. Uh, let me tell you, the pedal drive system is changing the way you fish out of a kayak. Uh, a lot more about that tonight. Let me jump into introducing the rest of the room, because we've got a lot of people a lot of people in the room tonight, and I'm excited to have everybody here uh, on the casting couch tonight. We've got two big dudes from <laughs> South Jersey, side by side, uh, sitting next to each other. Uh, and let me introduce our special guest. Um, and this is a guy, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. I've known this guy for a lot of years, a lot of years. And we're going to talk a little bit about that story. But uh, join us tonight, in my opinion, one of the best kayak experts on the planet right now. Tom Michael, everybody. That's Tom, how you doing Tom. tonight? Good. Thank, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having us. Thanks now, for having a kayak show. Oh, this is this is wanna, great. Let me start by by telling everybody this, and this is like a big preface for me, is that uh, I still consider myself. Don't nobody gasp for air here. I still consider myself a woman, a kayak <laughs> virgin. <gasps> I still consider myself a kayak virgin. Uh, and I say that because, you know, look, here's the thing I want to get across to everybody. Growing up in South Jersey, you learn to fish out of a small boat, right? Whether it's a John boat, a Coleman crawled at, a canoe, a basic kayak, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you learn how to fish. If you're in South Jersey, that's part of who you are as an angler. Um, but kayak fishing has advanced so much nowadays that... I'm still very much a kayak virgin, so I'm excited in this show not only to give my experiences, but to learn and to learn from guys like Tom, who who've been doing it for a long mm -hmm. time. Let me let me start there. Let's start right there. When I met you, you were not a kayak angler. When I met you, you were more of a saltwater salt, guy. Saltwater guy. I used to fish with my uncle, and all. I did a lot of bass fishing when I was younger. Yeah. I had an uncle. My uncle Al showed me a lot growing yep. up. But uh, I did saltwater, and. Uh, Get a little closer there here. There you go. Perfect. I uh, did saltwater and loved it so much. Uh, took a lot of people fishing. And my father-in-law said, you should take people out for charters. Yeah. You know, and next thing you know, he passed on, got my license, and I got it for about eight, nine years in Brigantine. Yep. And I loved it. You know, I mean, I loved, I loved taking people out, and it's their day off, and you get on the water, and they can – when you, you get that that satisfaction when you – you're driving in and you see them all with smiles. Oh yeah, you're, they got fish in the cooler. You know what I mean? They yeah, had you're a great making day. their day special. Their day special, and and people, you know, they get work all year to get a day like yeah. that. Yeah, and you're and teaching you, them stuff. I mean, you do yeah, that too, Pete, exactly. all the time. Yeah. There was Very nothing rewarding. better than taking the kids too. Mm -hmm. right. I used to love getting the fathers coming out with all their the gear, and I would put the kids a special bucktail with the right color, you know, and yeah. watch the uh, young sons outfish their fathers. You know? Yeah. I used to love doing that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, so. it's awesome. And I remember when I worked at Dick's, we were, we always tried to put something together where I got out with you yeah. one time. Yep. Uh, and Especially never, when you did the show. You started yeah. the show. We were going to do yep. City Limits. Do we were going to do AC. At Atlantic City. Yep. Do City Limits out of AC. Yep. Now, uh, so flash forward, uh, tell us how this so what happened kayak there? thing happened. Yeah, what happened there is I, I started working in a refinery in Philadelphia. And uh, once I got in there, I worked every other weekend. And there was a lot of areas I couldn't get into with the boat. Yeah. I used to get up on plane and skim over six inches of water with a 20-foot skiff you know and and i used to always want to get back to these spots so when i started you know working every other weekend i lost a lot of buddies i was at work i was off during the week i wind up just i looked at the kayaks i looked at the hobie first i got in one i test rided it and boom i was done right i bought one of them and i started sneaking to all those spots i couldn't get to yeah and little did i know you know you could go over flats so deep get back there and you find 15 20 foot holes back there yeah and fish are just locked up in there and, and you know, the the other cool thing i i think is great about kayak fishing is the accessibility of an angler to get into the sport of fishing 
Right. That, it, you know, like, for instance, we, we've been suffering with this in our sport, right? We, uh, we teach kids how to fish out of the back of a bass boat, um, $60,000, $70,000 bass boat. Yeah. And, um, you know, they, then they go to college, they come out. It's years before they can afford oh most God, guys yeah. to, to get back out on that water. But kayak is bridging that gap. Kayak fishing is allowing these kids from high school, college, young young people to to get into to, to the sport we all love. It's amazing. It's it's true. I mean, I, I can tell you, you know, as far as growing the sport, I'm, I'm, I'm always big in talking in terms of growing the sport. Um that is a huge, huge benefit of growing the sport, it's, getting new people involved. I can't tell you how many times I come out, I ride up on the bank, somebody comes up to the kayak, wow, i never seen one like that. Yeah. <laughs> I go, get in. No, no. And I give them a little basics and push them off and let them pedal around. Yeah. And they're like little kids. It was like you, your first oh, day. Dude, I love that. The first day, I pushed him <laughs> off over here. We're in January, freezing our ass off yeah. right here. I put him out in the kayak. He's like a little kid with new sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, run it, it, down. <laughs> it, it was awesome i mean i it, it's true it's like you know it was cold uh yeah. but but i tell you from being in a very basic kayak to getting in a hobie with that pedal drive dude it basically it, it'd be like you know it'd be like driving like a you know like a little tiny electric car so explain to people like what the hobie kayaks so you don't need a paddle it's got a foot like no a no pa thing? no paddle no paddle on you know on a lot of the models especially the you know we're out in the pas uh you know the they have PA, a pedal drive yeah, system the pas the outbacks, the outbacks the yep they all have a pedal driven system and you just you just yeah pedal. and and the biggest you got steering you got a rudder you have your steering yep. to it you know so that's why i always said that was my first choice because I don't want to paddle. I want to yep. fish. Now, of so, course, you right? could you could paddle. You can paddle if you get in there, like Mike says. Some areas aren't accessible. You pop your pedals out. You can paddle into. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. What? The, the, speaking of that, and because I I'm I'm a virgin like you on kayaks. I see a lot of people doing it, but I I noticed that there's what is the draft with paddling? I mean, uh, I I watch guys pedaling those and i'm like wow shouldn't they be running aground in that shallow water no nah, but they stick down and you can sometimes you'll get to learn how to do the pedals you can i call it butterflying you yep. can have the pedals just going like this ah, you okay. can just short stroke it and you can get over you see a bar and you have to get over it or a log you just bring your pedals up and you just butterfly over top of them if not, you can just gra always grab the paddle or push pole right. and get over it. Now, are the okay. seats real comfortable? Like, uh, I'm thinking my back would be hurting the whole day. Oh, dude, they're, there. Like, they're explain that. How's it work? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I could tell you the seat in it. You know, I feel like uh, you could be in a bass boat. You know what I mean? Like it's the captain's that chair on a bass boat on the back deck. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. And yeah. here's the great thing about it. And even for a big dude like you, Dave, uh, the 12 or the 14, which is or the two that I'm using, you could stand on it. And and in my opinion, it's as stable. Or more stable than like fishing out of a Coleman Carl deck. Seriously, yeah. it's that stable. Yep. So you know you can you know you get up to a brush pile, you could actually elevate, flip into that brush pile. You're not restricted to be down in the seat, mm -hmm. which is an amazing thing about about that particular kayak. You know, you're a champion as well. You're not Ron Champion, but you're a champion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you won the Hobie Open. Tell us what what tournament you won, what Open you won, and and how you won it. Tell us a little bit about that win. Uh, I'll start. Uh Hobie, I won the first year we had the Hobie Bass Open. The year prior, we have a big saltwater tournament in Jama uh, Jamaica Bay, New York. Oh, yeah. So I qualified out there, and I got to go to Hobie Worlds in uh, Amsterdam. So getting a taste of going to Hobie Worlds, and I was fortunate there. I think it was ninth or 10th catching a little brim. Yeah. And I, th I thought, they're like little crappie. What yeah. We? But going there... That's like their bass masters down there in Australia. You yeah. Know what I mean, getting a taste of that, I wanted to go back to the worlds. You know what I mean? So um, AJ does a good job with the bass open down in Kentucky. When they were putting it together, he gave us a little heads up looking for support. I just went down there because like, we all traveled together, went down to up by – by no means that I think I was going to win the thing, you know. Yeah. But I did, like I said, did my prep work, did all the homework, went down, won the uh, first year, that qualified me to go to Amsterdam. So but, what, what's the big bass kayak event in our country? Well, you got you got the Hobie Bass Open, but Chad Chad last this past spring had a bass championship. The KBF had a, a bass championship, and when he comes on, he can talk more about that. Okay. But this year, that was the highest payday. That we had for bass fishing, and what, and was, what that? was that? Winner got thirty-two thousand seven hundred. Wow, thirty-two thousand for a kayak tournament. Mm -hmm. 
that well, that's a lot of money, but it, that's, that's a lot of money. That's great, but it it brings up a serious question in my mind when you start talking about money like that, mm-hmm. and you guys are taking pictures Ooh. and trusting each other yes. with apps. Come at me, Pete. Come at you me. know. Keep coming. <laughs> Keep coming. Pete. Well, ha, ha, how are we handling the cheating? Well, they have in, in these tournaments. They have. A, they'll give you a bracelet the night before. You'll go to your captain's meeting. And they usually give you something to wear that has to be in that photo. So right. if you can't have pictures on your phone and enter them from like last year right. or whatever, you know what I mean? So you'll have that I- unique identifier, the fish in the picture, that, and it's time stamped. They can look back and see when it was taken. It's time stamped right. and stuff like that. I mean, like you said, Pete, you're always going to get some guys that are going to do something. Now, you know now, what I mean? Now, are they polygraphing? They are. Okay. They can do that, too. Okay. So, okay. so in, your, in your professional opinion, is is there a way to cheat? Is it foolproof? No. I mean, is anything foolproof? Look at even in a couple of these guys keeping bass in some of the bass tournaments and barrels right. and stuff, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're always going to have somebody who's going to try something, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, ha, I'm not going to say it's foolproof. But I think they do a great job with it, and I think with the apps, the apps lately are, are working well. You know? Yeah. Have has there been any? Uh, had you caught anybody? Yeah, they well, they just recently uh, caught a guy cutting his board down, and he had ah. I read that. Ah. And he had he took four inches out of the board. He had he took two inches out of one board and four inches out of another board. Wow. He caught one fish and took a picture on three different boards. Wow. Uh, but they scumbag. caught him. Wow. Okay. Someone. So, someone Laid now, it all out, did the measurements yeah. and everything, and saw what wow. he was doing. Dude, he money shunned, made, money <laughs> makes people crazy. Now, like man. you said, our community, in the kayak community, I heard he was locked down. He's blackballed. He was locked down, hiding. People were looking now, for him. Now, see, like, here's the, down south, you don't want to pull that. I heard he just won the International Canoe uh, Championship, that guy, no? Hot, hearty, delicious.